In 1906, the British battleship Dreadnought was launched and naval shipbuilding changed forever. Long-range weapons, new optics, fire control systems, steam turbine, cemented armor, this ship became a sensation in naval circles and an appellative for the battleship class. With its appearance, the great naval arms race began. Which country would build the most powerful warship? The New York class, which Texas is a part of, were those the next evolution down the road. They were super dreadnought. They were uh, dreadnought plus. The guns were 14 inches. They were the largest uh, 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 rifle, Navy rifles ever uh, floated at that time, um, and then she had armor to match. She was able to uh, unleash a, a large volley, a 14-inch uh, volley of 10 guns, um, and take that same punch back with her armor. The main event in the USS Texas's career was her participation in opening a second front, the landing of Allied troops in northern France in the summer of 1944. Texas was able to come close to the shore and maintain direct fire from all her guns. By that time, Texas's armament was already far behind comparing to the latest battleship's range of fire. But the commander found an original solution to this problem. He flooded part of the torpedo protection rules, tilting the ship and increasing the elevation angle of the guns. This adjustment allowed the USS Texas to strike all of her planned targets. Battleship Texas would fire more than 500 rounds, allowing the Allies were able to gain a foothold on the shore and expand it. Texas is a truly unique ship. It came into commission before the First World War and is the only United States battleship which took part in the Second World on three major theaters of war in Africa, Europe, and the Pacific. Today, this armored giant is standing on eternal parking at the pier in San Jacinto port, personifying the force and naval power of the first half of the 20th century.